It's yours. It's yours radio. It's yours radio. Live 97.5. Everything Urban Breakfast Club in the morning. Ryan Banks at night. Donnie O'Bilu. Yep, 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 yep. The Party King. DJ Cheese. Yeah. J Mo. Yeah. And we got the whole squad here today. Oh, man. It's Sunday Fun Day. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, and man. we have with us on the live line. Um, my alum is in the building today. Best believe it. University of Maryland, East Shore. Men's head basketball coach, Jason Crafton. Welcome to the show, good brother. Fellas, what's going on? Good to be here, man. Yeah, man. Good to have you, man. Great to have you. You've made stops in Villanova with the Philadelphia 76ers. But let's take it back even before that, even in your playing days. Uh, so let's start there. Oh, yeah. Well, I grew up in New York, uh, was born in Brooklyn, grew up on Long Island, and uh, ended up playing my college ball at a Division II school called Nyack College. And uh, we were blessed to win the conference championship and put a banner up and play the national tournament in uh, the 99-2000 season. So it was a, I was a point guard and an uh, a, a intense defender and uh, maintained a lot of great relationships with those guys and ended up going back and being a head coach there for seven years. Uh, from 2012 to 2018. So I uh, had a great basketball experience in New York and enjoyed playing at Nyack. Wow, that's great. That's great. And so it, it's it got to be a beautiful thing, man, to to play there and then to go back and coach there. Yeah, man. As you as you know, anytime you get a chance to, to, to go back to your alma mater, you know, even if it's just for homecoming, I'm showing you, you step on the grounds at UMBS, uh-huh. you know, just for, you know, being back at your alma mater is always a, a great time and being able to do it, um, not just be there, but be involved in pushing the basketball program forward and cleaning up the program because that fell off for a lot of years prior to that. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was a great experience. We had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, that's incredible, man. That's incredible. And also, you you were very instrumental in develop, the uh, development of uh, Toronto Raptors guard Cal Lowry um, at Villanova. Speak on that and your experience there in Villanova. Had a great time at Villanova learning under Jay Wright and and, yeah, we had Kyle Lowry as a freshman, tough, hard-nosed guard from Philly with a lot of intangibles defensively and, and leadership-wise. And uh, it was a great journey with him. He, he got injured towards ACL. And a lot of people don't know he had one of the, the fastest recoveries uh, in sports. He tore his ACL in late August and was back playing in December, uh, only missed a, the first few games. And, and as a freshman, led all, fresh, and led all the guards in the Big East in rebounding uh, as a freshman guard in the Big East, coming back from the ACL tear in like three or four months. Uh, so that, wow. that kind of gives you some some uh, data and some history on how tough that kid is and and uh, so proud of what he's doing now in the NBA. Yeah, definitely. definitely. And, and that's that, that, that Philly toughness right there, huh? No question. You know, just a grinder, a competitor, blue-collar worker. And, and you see it, he dies for loose balls, he takes charges. He's not afraid to get in the huddle and get in God's face mm-hmm. and say what needs to be said when it needs to be said. And um, you don't see that a lot in today's game. Sometimes people defer, and he's uh, at the forefront of leadership and uh, continues to push that program forward. So um, proud of him. Excited to see what he continues to do. Definitely, definitely. We have with us University of Maryland Eastern Shore men's head basketball coach Jason Crafton. Um, also talk about your uh, stop in uh, Philly with the Sixers, uh, being on that coaching staff. <laughs> You know what? I had a great opportunity to go. Um, Elton Brand hired me um, in the summer of 2018 and gave me an incredible opportunity to kind of be a part of the Sixers organization, do some player development with the NBA team, um, and also be an assistant coach with the G League team. It was an incredible opportunity. I got a chance to to be around Joel and B, Ben Simmons, uh, a great coaching staff, uh, and Brett Brown at the time, and got a chance to see you know, just the inner workings of an NBA program pursuing uh, an NBA championship. And in the G- at the G League side, got a real opportunity just to be a part of developing players. You see Shake Milton right now, mm-hmm. uh, a rostered NBA player. We had him a lot as a two-way player um, that first year, and he was with us a lot and, and just had a chance to just to help him develop his game and his skill set and give him a chance to get some reps and to be able to be on the NBA side now, um, you know, as a – starter some nights and a legit backup. So mm-hmm. tremendous experience, great people, tremendous organization. Looking forward to seeing what those guys do do moving forward. Yeah, I'm sure it brings a smile to your face seeing some of the guys that you helped develop and, and, and seeing the uh, success 
some of those players. Just real quick uh, before we t- talk about your um, how you got to uh, UMES, I, w- w- talk about real quick because I don't think a lot of people understand the importance of the G League and what that means mm-hmm. to uh, the NBA. Speak on that real quick. Yeah, you know, I think each each organization uses it differently. Um, the 76ers do a tremendous job with their G League team, which is located in Delaware. They're called the Delaware Blue Coats. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you have a couple of different scenarios with the G League. You have your two-way players, which are guys that um, can shift back and forth between the NBA team. Um, every NBA team has a certain amount of two-way players. Then you have your roster G League player, which is sometimes somebody that's been the NBA um, and is now dropped down to the G League and is trying to get back. Or you just have like you know guys from overseas that are trying to find their way. So um, it's a, it's an incredible opportunity for players to uh, play against great competition. And if used the right way, a lot of the G League teams run the exact same offensive and defensive philosophies as the pro team. So if used the right way, it's a, it's a, way, a creative way for um, players to develop to be able to play for that, that main team. Or if there's injuries going on with the, 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 uh, the main team, they can always bring somebody up. So it's, a, it's an incredible experience for young players um, to be able to get some good experience. Yeah, and that's, uh, you, you mentioned Shake Milton. I mean, he's a prime uh, a testament to that uh, here recently with the Sixers. Oh, yeah. Shake, Shake was, when he was in the Philadelphia 76ers training camp that fall 2018, his rookie season, he's a second-round pick, pick like 54th in the draft, you know, close to the bottom. Mm-hmm. And uh, he came in, he had some injuries he was fighting through, and he really used that G League opportunity as a chance to get healthy, uh, get a lot of game reps, um, and get a chance to really learn the, six, the Sixers' offense and defensive philosophies. So anytime he got moved up, he went in with a great understanding of what they were trying to do. He got his opportunity, took advantage of it, made some shots, mm-hmm. played some great defense, got signed to a real contract, and, and now he's you know a, a great backup for now for them and, and competing to start. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And talk now, how did you get to uh, UMS? Oh, the story for getting to Mount Eastern Shore is an interesting one. You, you know, when I was uh, coaching at the Naval Academy, I was associate head coach um, way back in, in 2000. And, uh, man, might have been 2008 wow. or 2007. And uh, the, the UMES had just let go of a coach. And um, I found my way to uh, the MEAC tournament and, and, and bumped into our athletic director and, and just kind of hunted him down and tried to find a way to, you know, put my name out there and, and try to, you know, interview for the job. We got to know each other. He didn't hire me at that time, but we stayed in touch over the years. Mm-hmm. And then fast forward 11, 12 years later, you know, now I had, you know, going on and had head coaching experience. I've been in the NBA, and, and that's kind of how we had that relationship already in place. So when it came time to interview him for the job in uh, the spring of 2019, there was a relationship there. I had a, a lot of information about, you know, what went well and what wasn't going well at Mount Eastern Shore mm-hmm. to put together a great vision and, and uh, was able to get the job. That's incredible. And, and that goes to show how networking and, and building relationships and not burn, burning bridges is very important. Yeah, I tell a lot of young coaches or just any professionals that are coming up in the game professionally, you're going to be young, you're going to be enthusiastic. Sometimes you might not get what you want to start, but maintain those relationships. A lot of times people get upset they didn't get a job or something and they, they don't realize it's all about the follow-up and, and staying consistent, growing, seeing areas you need to improve at, and then be able to come full circle and use that network to be able to help you, you know, not just in, in getting a job at that place, but maybe helping in something else, you know, down the line. So mm-hmm. um, networking has always been a big thing. I'm an old-school guy in that regard and try to stay true to that as best I can. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know we, we spoke before, but, you know, about um, Maryland Eastern Shore. is not a traditional powerhouse, of course, but – um, I know me being an alum and playing there uh, many moons ago, um, I was sold on, you know, our class is going to be the class to put UMS on the map. And I'm sure every class has sold that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, and we believed it going in. You know, we look at, yeah, we could do this and we do that. But um, as we mentioned before, uh, because of the high turnover rate, it's really hard to build um, at UMS and particularly a lot of MEAC schools because for a lot of coaches, that's just a quick stopping place to somewhere um, – up the uh, pole and up the ladder of the uh, Division One basketball. So um, talk about what it is for you that you want to lay down and um, you're looking forward to implementing. Uh, well, obviously, this would have been your second year, so going into your third year, 
um, because of COVID. So also, also, first talk about what it is, your blueprint you want to lay down, and then also how COVID has affected that. Oh, no question. First, I, I got to track down some throwback footage of you back in the, the late 80s, early 90s. I, I would love to see, you know, you getting it in. No <laughs> doubt. In, in no doubt. Uniform, probably rocking the Russell Athletic back in the day. Yeah, sure, but, indeed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look, and I had, the, I had the Gumby, I had the Gumby haircut and the whole nine, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Good times, good times, man. Indeed. But, you know, I, I think, you know, when you look at the situation here, you, you, you hit on some key points. One, there hasn't been a lot of consistency in the head coach, you know, position here. I think they've had, you know, maybe four or five head coaches over the course of the last 15, 20 years. That's a lot of turnover. Mm-hmm. When you have that much turnover, what happens is you don't have a lot of consistency in terms of just the family atmosphere on campus with the community, you know, with the basketball alums. And one of the things that we're trying to change here, one of my biggest visions is creating this family atmosphere, you know, reconnecting with alums like yourself and alums all over, you know, and just letting them feel like they're a part of what we're trying to build uh, and there's a connection there. So that's a big thing for me. You know, family also applies in terms of how we play, Mm -hmm. you know, sharing the basketball, doing things together, looking out for our brothers in the dorms, in the classroom, and in that regard. Shout out to our guys for getting a 3.2 GPA this fall. Oh, uh, we were so proud of them in that regard. So um, family's a big word for us. You, you know, the other word that's huge for us is tenacity, <laughs> and that's mm-hmm. our edge. You know, and that's how hard we want to play defensively. Um, that's how we want to be able to mentally turn around from, you know, if we lost a game or something didn't go our way, that edge that we play with is uh, what we is the driving force for helping us push this program forward. Mm-hmm. When you put those two things together, that equals for us what we call one way. So we're always running around here talking about doing things one way, and that's being together and being tough with that family and tenacity vibe. So that's kind of the vision as we build this foundation. Um, I got a five-year contract here, which is um, one of the longest any they've given any Mount Eastern Shore head coach. So yeah. um, we feel like we've got a commitment to trying to do this thing the right way. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Talk about the challenges of COVID um, in regards to – Obviously, this year there's no play, but also with uh, recruiting. Oh, COVID is, is throwing a, a, a curveball in a lot of this stuff. And cultivating relationships now is, you know, even more of a priority than it's ever been, you know, because the recruiting class we brought in this past year, when you take over a job and you your first two classes, you know, when you're transitioning and building a team are going to be big classes. Mm-hmm. And we brought in seven guys in this class. And a majority of them, if not all of them, were done via Zoom calls, you know, FaceTime. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, yeah. like not everybody got a chance to visit campus. Mm-hmm. So um, you've got to be razor sharp with your film evaluation, uh, very strategic in how you get to know guys via these FaceTime and Zoom calls and connecting with their network. Um, yeah, so that, that, that creates the biggest challenge. And now with everything going on, the recruiting is shut down till April. So mm. nobody was allowed to go out in the summertime, the fall or the winter right now. So, you know, just kind of really, you know, being as sharp as you can with your film evaluations, your, how you connect with these kids and, and getting to know their families is important, but it's definitely throwing a curveball in things. We feel like we did a pretty solid job of bringing in some good guys mm-hmm. that, that are going to continue to help push this program forward. Man, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Um, I, I'm being a former alum, man. I, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, some of the, the things that you have in place as, as far as the family. You know, you talk about being family and reconnecting. But I, I think about 2013, um, they had like a – it was during uh, Midnight Madness. Mm-hmm. And they had the uh, some of the former alum come in. And they introduced them right before the game, right before the uh, the boy. They had the, the girls' game, and then right in between the girls and the boys' uh, game for Midnight Madness. And they had, and they did it by year, uh, and they went all the way back to the '60s. Those who were left, okay, <laughs> those who were left, that's still here. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, it, it was nice, man. And they they introduced them, and they ran out on the floor, kind of like back in the day. It just felt good. They had the cheerleaders out there, and the players out there, and they dapped everybody up. I mean, it, it was just an incredible feeling to run out there. On that floor, and granted, back when I played, we were at Tall's Gym, so they were building the um, Height Center when um, I okay. was when I was in school. <laughs> yeah, so um, it was good to run out on the new floor, man, and just uh, be a part of that. So uh, you know, things like that, I think uh, are very yeah, key. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm writing this down, man. That's good. If you enjoyed it, that's something you definitely want to look at trying to bring back. Uh, 
shout out to Tall's Gym and all the guys that played in the throwback gym. I like bringing the guys in there every once in a while to give them a little feel of history. Mm. You know, I could definitely see how that place got packed out back in the day. Yes, you guys indeed. had some incredible environments. Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So now, uh, University of Maryland Eastern Shore head coach, head men's basketball coach, Jason Crafton with us on the live line. It's yours radio, live 97.5, everything urban. Breakfast Club in the morning, Ryan Banks tonight, Donnie O.B., Lou B., you got anything for the coach? Oh, man, I was just listening. Check this out, right? I got it. Oh, now, for the kids that's out here right now that's looking for an opportunity to get to the next level, because I have one in mind, and it happened to be my son. He's <laughs> okay, a, yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> I, need, I can get your information from Donnie, and I can send you uh, some film or whatever. And uh, Oh, yeah. Because he's in his 12th year. I mean, he's in the 12th grade, and he's uh, he's been doing what I guess he's supposed to have been doing for his standing shape, working out with that. But I want to try and get him into a great program because I know that his work ethic will get him where he needs to go. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, so yeah. Far as, I mean, shout, shout out to all the local players. We got former Bayside Player of the Year, Kevon Boyles, mm-hmm. that played at Stephen Decatur High School, is a, a sophomore on our team right now, mm-hmm. going into a great young player. And, uh, you know, we're, we're actively looking at all local players and, and anybody that's got talent. You know, I know um, over the years there's been a, you know, a disconnect between the local hoop scene and the Maryland Eastern Shore program. So we're trying to bridge that gap and, you right. know, even do some virtual coaches clinics and stuff like that if the, if the local season gets canceled. So mm-hmm. um, I would say, shoot, I'm going to get my email out to everybody on this call, yourself and everybody listening. It's okay. Jason, uh, JDC. R A F is in Frank T O N at U M E S dot E D U. That's J D Crafton at U M E S dot E D U. Uh, any players and ballers out there, send us your film, um, and, and we'll definitely check you out. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. Um, just real quick uh, before we wrap things up, we're gonna change gears real quick. Mm-hmm. You know, so you being being a native New Yorker. Mm-hmm. You know, Mr. Crafton, we got we got to prick your brain a little bit and give us. Your... <laughs> mm-hmm. So listen, last couple of weeks we've been doing like a, the goat. So we had like a, everybody just went around the table and gave their favorite all time albums. Um, that I guess top five artists of all time. Now, now again, when we saying goat, we're talking about your goat, your favorite, who you like. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? So give me give me your uh, being from New York. You know, I know you. Uh, that's where hip hop started. You know. So give us your five favorite rappers of all time. Ooh, you're going to give me that for five, but I, I got to go Nas number one. Mm, okay. <laughs> my, see, that's why I had my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm probably going Biggie number two. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm probably giving you all New York. I'm going Jay-Z number three. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go outside of New York, but I, I got to give a shout-out to Tupac. I'm going pocket four. Okay. And uh, you know what? I'll probably give. Uh, I, I might. I might. I might let Most Def get into my top mm. five. I put, I put Most mm. Def in five. Yeah, that's a solid five. And Most Def is uh, definitely one of my favorite MCs, man. Him and Talib Kweli, man. They yeah. they did that thing with you know Black Star and all that. But uh, Most Def is definitely slept on. So. That's a solid yeah, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Solid five. You put me on the spot just now. You put me on the spot, man. <laughs> and you did good, though. You you rolled them off. So, you know, that sounds like something, the conversation nah, you already had one. before, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know, in this game, you got to always be ready. So, no <laughs> it's, doubt. It, it, it's, it's whatever, man. No doubt. Now, off the top, give me some of your, um, it don't have to be any order or anything, but just give me some of your favorite albums that you just like. That These are the joints that I just, I just put in, man, and just let them go. Oh, man, uh, I think anything Nas, I mean, you know, Illmatic, Stillmatic, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole catalog. Um, it, was written, it was written, you know, uh-huh. um, Jay-Z, Hard Knock Life, um, Biggie, Ready to Die, you, you know. Um, yeah, that, that, that's kind of some stuff that you can just let ride. But I also yeah. like, you know, some old school, you know, um, R&B and, and stuff like that as well. But mm-hmm. we're talking hip-hop, that those would be the albums that I would, you know, don't want to let go. All right, where, where? What's this you throw R&B out there? Give me some of your R&B favorites. 
Oh, I'm going old school like Luther Vandross, you know, Teddy Pendergrass. Mm. You know I mean? <laughs> Man, you talking about you talking yeah. about that quiet storm right there, baby. Old school, baby. <laughs> when I, Luther's when in the I, I think I said when I was in college, I used to do the old school at midnight on the radio show. This is back yeah. in the 90s, and we used to throw some old school up there. Yeah. But we could put some boys to men up there. We could put some shy. Okay, <laughs> okay. Shout to D.C. with shy right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Frankie know. Crocker, so BLS. We, 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 yeah, oh, that's legendary right there. Oh, yeah. You got the voice, though, Jason. You definitely got the voice for it, for sure. <laughs> I appreciate it, man, yeah. yeah. So, you know, this basketball thing, uh, you know, at some point, maybe I'll just do my, when, when I retire, I'll, I'll jump on the radio with you guys, and I'll, I'll do the old school at midnight for you guys. <laughs> uh, you got it, you got it, you know what I mean? You got that uh, super rocking Mr. Magic, WBLS. One yeah. seven four five. You know, <laughs> if you're not listening to WBLS. You're just it's not, not listening. listening. Yeah. In the class by itself. Well, <laughs> yeah, man. You said the quiet storm, man. So that's that's that, you know we old school guys in a little indeed. bit that regard. So oh yeah, that's it, man. Indeed, indeed. Well, once again, man, we appreciate you for coming on, man. Keeping us, uh, uh we're give, giving uh, information. I know again, a lot of folks are asking, you know, what what's going on with basketball in the area, UMS in particular. And I uh, said, well, man, we got to get the coach on. And uh, yeah. you can hear it right from the coach, you know, what's going on with the program and, mm-hmm. and where they're headed and, and how COVID has affected them. And, and for those that didn't know your backstory, there it is. You right. know what I'm saying? No, nah, no, nah, I appreciate you doing that. Like I said, it's a tough season right now with, with our, you know, canceling the season. So as you mm-hmm. see across the country, you got a lot of different stuff going on. A lot of people are on pause. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our, our program in Bethune-Cookman in our league, uh, or, you know, cancel the season. I think you see the CIAA just cancel the entire thing. So okay. there are some MEAC teams that are playing. You know, you know, we're not – we're going to keep our guys safe and, you know, um, uh, away from this virus right now and try to, you know, do this thing the right way next year. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. We need some energy, some basketball energy on the shore. Yeah. For real. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We're yeah. going we're gonna to get it rocking and popping, man. If we Hopefully – We'll be this. We'll get past this COVID thing, and we can get some fans and, and not have to keep the doors closed because right. of COVID. And this vaccine can get pumping and rocking, and we can do some things in the community and, and start packing this place out the way the, the way it should be. There's no football here at the Eastern Shore. There's no pro team. Yeah. So mm-hmm. when we say our shore, our team, we want we want to make that become reality. So we're going to give you a blue collar, tough, hard nosed basketball team that's going to go out there and earn your respect and earn your cheers. Yeah, shout out to UMS, man. Hey, coach on the phone. You know, uh, the brother has an awesome background, so I feel that that's going to be some in the air. You know. Yeah, and it's oh, about yeah. time, man. You know, because like I said, I'm, I've been, I've been, man. I remember when UMS had the basketball, I mean, had the football. They had all of that, and it's been taken away, and it's been like, it's been like down here ever since. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. It's been a long time. You know, it, it wasn't. You got to go back to the '70s. Right. When UMES was in Division Two mm-hmm. in the early '70s, late '60s when they had a successful basketball program. So, like right. I said, this is not going to be something that's going to happen overnight. overnight. Yeah, I know. You know, COVID definitely throws a wrench in this thing, but we're going to need the community to come out support these guys. Um, you know, we're going to create the template for for success in basketball over these next few years because there's no Division One model for, to, for these guys to see. So right. you know, I'm excited to do this with the community, with our administration mm-hmm. and our guys and our coaching staff and just say, hey, we got a chance here to create the template and the model for success in basketball at the Division One level at Maryland Eastern Shore. Correct. not going to be easy. It's going to be hard to yeah. with us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, indeed, yeah. indeed. You got the right man for the job. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> God will make no mistakes. You. you know what I mean? <laughs> University of Maryland, Eastern Shore, men's head basketball coach, Jason Crafton. Again, we appreciate you, good brother. And you got a uh, – th- th- hey, this is home right here for you. So anytime you want to get some, the word out on anything right. that's going on with the program, anything that's going on at UMS or whatever, boom, hit me, and we're going to make it happen, brother. Appreciate you guys so much, man. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, Hawk Nation. Uh, we'll see you soon. All yes, right. indeed. Right, yes, Chris. indeed. Hey, 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 Jason, I got uh, It Ain't Hard to Tell. Is that good enough? Go for it, man. Nah, <laughs> it ain't hard to tell. It's yours, radio, my man. Be good. Peace. If I rule the world. All right. It's yours. It's-